we'll see. So I, I think the last time I was demonstrating this, we did see a, a view of the Earth. So this is where we're studying. Let me just to make sure we are studying at the current time. Um, it for whatever reason doesn't start with it as a default. So that's our blue globe, Earth. Let me just to rotate around a little bit here, and um, and there is. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Um, that is the view of the kind of Western U.S. California ish. Can I zoom into? So that's a Baja California, and trying to locate the major land features. And can I actually locate the Bay Area? Might be able to. Uh, yeah, I think that's the Bay Area. It's a little confusing because it's, uh, oops, um, I need to change my keyboard. Uh, it's a little bit rotated, but I think that is uh, San Francisco Bay Area, as in that is a San Francisco, and that is Oakland, Alameda, and all. Uh, I'm not gonna try to land because uh, it, last time I tried it, uh, the land uh, ground features are not very impressive. So I'll just uh, stay here. So what I want to do is pick out the different parts of the solar system. And I figure the thing to do is start out with, uh, let me just rotate this again. Uh, start out with the inner part of the solar system. And uh, I'm gonna go to the darker side of Earth because that's, that, that's the view where uh, that's the view where I can find the sun, yeah. It's called the solar system. I like seeing the sun is where I can kind of orient myself in the solar system. And one marker here is useful for kind of visualizing the space that we are in. And that marker is the orbit. So I'm gonna turn the orbit on that will help me see um, where we are. Okay, so the, most of the orbits are a little bit tilted. So that means I'm, we're kind of tilted with respect to the plane of the solar system. So I'm here now, so, okay. And the orbits also help me locate the planets. Um, so I do have a search feature that I'll eventually <laughs> lean on, but I think for inner planets, I can find them based on the orbits. So that's one of the planets that's in the inner orbit in the solar system. So it's either Venus or Mercury. Okay, that's a Mercury. Let's just start with that um, since um, we are, that's the innermost planet. So I'm going to turn off the orbit so that we have more realistic view of what, uh, what it would look like looking at Mercury from Earth. Um, and uh, other than I just selected it and there's a marker there, it, it would be very hard to recognize it against a stellar background. So uh, I'm gonna, there's a go to thing here. So uh, go to go to object. So it'll travel there in a short time. Now, um, this is like a super luminal speed of travel. Um, just the distance wise, if you are traveling from Earth to Mercury at light speed, it would take you minutes, like five minutes. Um, from Earth to Sun is about eight minutes. So to Mercury, it would be on that range. Um, so that's Mercury. And uh, let's look around here. And um, <laughs> if you were just seeing it, and if uh, you thought, it, hey, that looks like a moon, um, you would have a lot of justification for that. And um, it, in many ways, Mercury looks very similar to Moon. Like Moon, it doesn't have atmosphere. So our textbook has it in the chapter, in the same chapter, uh, calling it cratered world. And um, this, uh, and oh, I don't think I really mentioned this too much. This thing, this line is called the terminator. It's the line separating the light side of uh, um, object like planet and, and the dark side. It, um, I guess, yeah, so term. Um, and so if we are sticking um, close to what's realistic, we can only see the day side of Mercury because this night side, there are not being any cities at all. There aren't any <laughs> ground lights that's beautiful to see for Earth. So I'm just gonna change the setting a little bit here so that we don't have to be bound by the day night side. I'm gonna change the visual style or actually camera. 
so that there's a quite a bit of substantial ambient lighting so that it allows to see both the things that are on the day side of mercury and the same things that are on the night side of mercury so when you zoom in and kind of look around um, i mainly want to find some of the features that the slides and the uh, textbook refers to um, textbook refers to wrinkles of mercury uh, i think that's one of those uh, wrinkles so uh, this is what's called the scarps uh, s-c-a-r-p it's uh, um, take i guess uh, one good short description it's evidence of past uh, geological activity we think uh, these wrinkles formed as mercury's uh, crust uh, contracted as it cooled so currently mercury is a, a geologically dead world we don't see any volcanoes or currently active uh, well geological activity and uh, let's see if i can find oh, i think this is also one of those scarps um, on the or, or close to the terminator of mercury there must be some on the day side let me find that um oh i guess there's one that's kind of going horizontal so so yeah these images of mercury a uh, relatively high resolution image of mercury it comes from real photos we've had orbiters around the mercury collecting this data so it's one of the uh, features in this game that's um, that's based on the real world it's not made up so okay I, I think that's enough for mercury unless there's a particular feature people who are here in real time want to see uh, i got other parts of the solar system i want to show so let me um first orient myself towards the sun again so that i kind of know where i am what direction i'm looking and let me turn on the orbit so that i can find the venus hopefully um, let's see here uh, let me zoom out a little more let's see um yeah i guess i can all the planets are now out on the outer orbit of mercury so that's mars okay that's venus yeah so once again uh, without markers and helpful features you it would be very difficult to tell that's a venus for mercury uh, so kind of the one of the um, humbling things about the length the scales in space that uh all this venus is earth size it's not a small planet and it looks very small from almost anywhere on earth uh, or in the solar system that's not right near venus so that's venus um wait can i yeah um <laughs> from orbit i think it's uh, kind of hard to see interesting features on venus um biggest reason being it has a very thick atmosphere it's a uh, impenetrable in the visible uh, wavelengths um, so we've taken radar image of uh, venus from orbit uh, by we i mean human beings in general i think for some reason russians sent more missions to venus than us did um, so uh, but from orbit it looks kind of smooth um, relatively featureless because um, with the through the thick uh, so it's got a large proportion of carbon dioxide don't know what other gases are there that's forming the clouds but you don't really see through that it's uh, this smoother feature is basically what you do see oh i think we can land on venus let's land <laughs> uh, we've actually uh, landed the landers on venus so that's actually been done and uh, uh, a lot of this is i think made up of uh, most of the landers we've landed on Venus, unlike uh, Mars landers, they only lasted, I think, two hours the maximum. Uh, this is, a, Venus has a very corrosive atmosphere, um, the, and corrosive and very hot atmosphere, hotter than most of home ovens at their maximum temperature. So um, landers that we send don't really last that long. And one thing you kind of see simulated here, if you're on Venus, it uh, kind of opaqueness goes both ways. You won't see outside the world because the thick atmosphere will be blocking most of your view. 
And I was playing with this earlier. One thing the simulation doesn't really simulate is how the atmosphere thins out as you go up, because uh, you'll kind of see it when, as I go into orbit here. Uh, almost, I'm speeding up. Okay, I'm gonna go into orbit soon. Okay, <laughs> it just happened suddenly. I mean, so, you know, this part isn't realistic, but um, it, it's, you know, simulation is not the real world. There's only so much. Um, you can simulate without um, the demand on the hardware being even higher than what it is already. So, okay, so that's a Venus. Again, uh, I got more part of the solar system to show. So unless there are requests from my real-time folks, I will go. Oh, you know, what? Uh, I think in looking at Earth, I forgot about the moon. So let's go back to Earth and um, kind of let's look at how the moon looks like from Earth. Uh, so I first need to, I mean, I don't need a need to, but I want to <laughs> orient myself by looking at the sun. Um, because kind of, once I know where the sun is, then I know where everything else should be. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's Jupiter. Uh, let me, um, do I want to, let me turn off uh, the orbit for dwarf moons, because I think that's revealing a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me or turning on orbits, it's kind of like using cheat code, but there's a degree to which I'm willing to cheat and degree to which I think cheating uh, spoils too much. Let's see, is that Earth? That's Neptune. Okay. Um, I don't know where Earth is. Ranas. Okay, I'm going to make maybe one more. Guess and then okay, one more guess, and then if I don't get it, I'll just use the search. Okay, there it is planetary body center Earth moon. All right, um, so let me center that. And once again, <laughs> without helpful markers, you wouldn't really be able to notice that that's Earth from Venus. And uh, let me go a little faster. So the label says it's a berry center. And uh, that's because if you turn on the orbit, you can kind of see that Earth actually orbits um, around that berry center. And I'm pretty sure that berry, uh, berry center, meaning center of mass between Earth and Moon, that's still within Earth. So um, it's still significant that, so, oh, so far Mercury and Venus hasn't had any natural satellites. That's why we haven't pointed that out. Um, Earth, beginning with the Earth, all the planets now will have some kind of a natural satellite. And with Earth and Moon, it is quite unusual just how large the Moon is compared to the size of Earth. Uh, we'll see more of that soon. Um, let me just turn around to, to try to find the Moon. Oh, and <laughs> you can actually see the stars here. Um, um, so basically from anywhere in the solar system, the set of stars that you see or the constellations that you can divide them into, it'll be basically the same. Because uh, again, <laughs> as we were talking about in module one, the uh, distance between stars are so much larger compared to the size of the scale of solar system. All right. Um, Where's my moon? Oh, I think it's the yellow light. That's what the moon's orbit is. So let me uh, follow the orbit. That's kind of why I have it on so that it helps me find. And uh, there it is. Yeah, okay. So you can kind of see what the moon looks like for a Earth. Um, yeah, okay. So right now I can't capture it in the same view as the sun because we are close to quarter moon. Sun and the moon are at close to 90 degrees. But so if you are somewhere near Earth and you are looking for the moon, that's the moon there. And um, let me try this. If you, I think your, your textbook actually has an image that does this. Um, so I'm just gonna track Earth and move a little bit while I'm tracking Earth. If you want to put both Earth and Moon in the same picture while um, maintaining the correct length of scale, uh, then this is how small they would have to appear. 
So I'm looking at this from above what I hope is Earth's North Pole, actually South Pole, sorry. The moon is orbiting clockwise, so I must be looking southward. So uh, here's Earth and there's the moon. <laughs> and you can make it a little bit better uh, by kind of, you know, using the entire diagonal of the screen, but it's a, uh, uh, wait, I think I'm a little bit closer. To, sorry, the perspective effect is getting in me a little bit. Um, but it, it's, uh, I think of my point of view is much closer to Earth than Moon. Uh, if I were equidistant, then it, this would have to be much more drastic. Okay, uh, let me just uh, go to Moon <laughs> and um, look at some features of the Moon. Um, oh, and the time to travel from Earth to Moon, if you are going at light speed, that's about one second. So this travel here is happening at sub-light speed. So, uh, so let me show you the, did I accidentally, oh, wait, wait, sorry, I didn't go to Moon, I went to Apollo land, which the program doesn't let me um, pick the Moon, it always uh, has me pick the Apollo land, which is super annoying, okay. I'm, now pick the moon and not the Apollo lander. Um, let me make the view more realistic by reversing some of the changes I made before. So uh, before I um, made the camera change so that uh, I had ambient lighting, which allows you to see the darker side of uh, stellar bodies, but um, out in space, it you know, you don't have that. And actually, let me turn myself around 180 degrees because I'm kind of upside down. This is the southern part of the moon. And for whatever reason, our convention is that north is up. So I will do north is up convention here. So, so yeah, this is the moon. And actually, you um, this uh, big crater, you know, I don't know what it's called. Um, um, you can actually see it if uh, you uh, look through the telephoto zoom. I think uh, you can see it in one of the photos I've taken with my telephoto zoom camcorder. And um, this shows all the features of the crater that your textbook and the slides talk about. This is an impact crater um, with a, a impact of a large enough body. It kicked up the, the, uh, the surface parts of the crust. Uh, most of the debris settled down and um, the big portion of it performs a mound here and reduce. So this is kind of classic impact crater that's been preserved on planet on uh, on stellar bodies or on solar system bodies like the Moon and Mercury, where there are no atmosphere. So it just shows. So yeah, that's Moon. And um, if we had more time, we could kind of look through different features. This is Maria. This is the uh, features of the moon that's formed through, I don't know if a volcanic eruption is right. Um, it, this uh, formed in the thin uh, part of the moon that has thinner crust. Uh, this is from back when moon used to be more geologically active, the mantle sifted through, filled in the thing. And this uh, forms a younger surface then the highlands or the parts, I guess, that are not Maria. So these highlands are older surfaces. And one of the evidences of that are the craters. So you do see craters in the Maria, like the, is that a crater? Huh. Yeah, like these craters here, but these uh, very clearly formed after this uh, smooth surface feature formed. And um, and you can kind of see in the highlands, you see more number of craters. And on airless worlds like moon, you can use that number of craters as an indicator of the age of the surface. So, okay, uh, so let me leave that there. I think um, your slides does more. <laughs> I got other features to show and I have 10 minutes and, um, and again, with the invitation to my real time people for any suggestions or things you want to look at. Um, so yeah, that's the moon. Yeah, so last time I don't know why it glitched out. Um, this time it looks fine. Yeah, so you know, the sun is over there, it's uh, illuminating uh, the other side of the moon. And 
Yeah, it looks fine. Uh, I guess uh, let me turn on the ambient lighting a little bit. Um, I don't know what sort of um, decent setting, maybe 0 0.5. Yeah, maybe this is better so that at least it's not completely dark. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, so um, the moon doesn't have light and dark side. It does have the near and far side. So this would be the far side of the moon. And um, you said from Earth, three of the Earth there. So this side of moon is one that we couldn't see until we had a spacecraft orbiting the moon. Um, I think Russians did it first, actually. <laughs> so, all right, um, let's find the Mars. Um, in the interest of time, let me do it this way. I'm just gonna use the search function and type in Mars. <laughs> That'll make things easier. So, okay, so Mars is, yep, yeah, over there. Um, so I'll go there. Um, so this is simulating the trouble there. It doesn't really simulate it all that realistically. Oh, what am I passing there? Is that Venus? Can't tell. Oh, okay, let's just skip there. Um, so that's Mars. Uh, I think I might be looking at the darker, oh no, that is the light side of Mars. So the red planet, um, the red colors come from the surface feature. And uh, Mars has an atmosphere, but it, uh, it has a thinner atmosphere. It has um, the amount of atmosphere that Mars has. Oh, let's see if we can land. Um, it's, uh, um, it's, I think, about a hundredth, uh, no, less than hundredth that 1,000th of uh, Earth's atmosphere. It's very thin. And I think one, one thing that I thought was interesting to me is, um, yeah, okay, this is not really simulating the surface well. So let me just go up to the orbit again. Because ground views are a little bit boring in this software. Um, one thing that, um, so when you look at the carbon dioxide composition of, uh, atmosphere of Earth and Mars, in percentage terms, they are they are very different. You know, on Earth, the the percentage of carbon dioxide is about four hundred parts per million, or uh, I guess zero point zero four percent. That's how much uh, percent of our atmosphere um, carbon dioxide is in, on Earth. On Mars, it's close to 90 some percent. It's almost the uh, atmosphere of Mars is almost entirely carbon dioxide. But if you ignore the percentages, you just look at what's the just, just the amount, um, what the chemists call partial pressure of carbon dioxide. It's about the same. Um, so the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Mars is kind of similar to the amount of carbon dioxide in, uh, in the atmosphere of Earth. So it, I, I guess I find it interesting as an illustration just to how much the atmosphere of Earth is shaped by the life forms on earth because the free oxygen that you have on earth it's not something that would last on a geological time scale unless you have active processes like life forms that are maintaining it so uh, let me just point out a couple um interesting features of mars as uh, and tilted and then uh let i'll move on so the most uh, famous feature of mars is something called Olympus moons. And I think it's something I should be, am I flipped around the north south again? Because I thought that looks kind of like Olympus moons, maybe. No, it, I don't think it is. Okay, I need to find Olympus moons. Um, it's supposed to be on the northern hemisphere of Mars, but I don't know for a fact that I'm actually oriented correctly to be for the up to be north. Um, Let's see, I was looking for it earlier and I thought I had found it before. It's a pretty large feature. So once you see it and notice it, you wouldn't really miss it. Um, is it on the night side? Okay, I'm gonna have to change my camera setting again. Can barely see this. <laughs> All right, let me do this. Um, one of the 
good thing about software is you can change the parameters. Let me just make the time move faster so that uh, I bring the other side into day. And if all input months is that on that other side, I can just uh, bring it into view here without me trying to look in the dark. Is that? No, I don't think that's right. Um, as you might notice, I'm not super familiar with the other um, geographic features of Mars. There are Mars, uh, aside from Earth, Mars is the most explored planet. So uh, there are many other named geographical features that have been explored through Mars rovers and all the good stuff. Uh, ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Or, <laughs> sorry. I thought that was Olympus Mons, but I see now I was mistaken. That is Olympus Mons. And it's a quite remarkable feature. It's a, a volcanic mountain. And what is remarkable about it is that it's bigger than any other volcanic mountain that you would see on Earth. It's bigger in absolute terms. And you can see in relative terms just how large it is. It's a feature that would be visible from orbit. It's a big chunk of Mars. So let me just zoom in and just make sure that it is the Olympus Mons I've seen before. Yeah, I think those crater um, patterns appear familiar from other pictures I've seen. So yeah, that's the Olympus Mons. Oh, let me see if the thing will let me land. And if it lands, how um, accurate it appears. Okay. Oh, right, I've landed. Yeah, I don't think it's super accurate unless I'm right in the middle of crater. Um, all right, I gotta stop landing on planets because the software isn't really designed to do that. Oh, and I think it's a simulating the atmosphere here. Anyway, so that's, uh, um, so that's, yeah, let me do this. Um, so that is Mars and that's uh, Olympus Mons, the largest volcanic mountain, I guess in the entire solar system, unless Venus has one. Um, and there's a physiological, physiological, physical <laughs> reason why Olympus Mons is so large. Um, it has to do with the geological features that um, don't occur on Mars. So um, Earth has convection in the mantle. We have tectonic plate. So on Earth, um, location of volcanoes kind of move, which is why we have string of volcanic islands <laughs> that have formed over geological time scale. On Mars, um, Mars doesn't have tectonic plates. The the kind of the the Man, the crust doesn't move. So if there's a weak spot where uh, volcanic eruptions occur, it was able to occur over and over in the same spot. So it just made one giant mountain rather than a series of volcanic mountains. So, so that's one interesting feature of Mars, interesting and famous feature of Mars. And um, I wanted to show one more thing, which are these uh, polar caps. Mars has polar caps. It's uh, far enough away from the sun that it can have a frozen state of things. And uh, most of this polar cap is actually dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide, the major component of Mars's atmosphere. But uh, we are pretty sure that there's a frozen ice underneath. I think some of, do we have rovers that actually found that? Uh, some of the rovers might have found the underground frozen water. Um, we are pretty sure that there is probably frozen water underneath the uh, dry ice. Um, but our search for life stands with not the solid water, but um, liquid water. That's what we are hoping to find. Okay, um, I'm looking at my time and uh, I said that I'm kind of, uh, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, let me do this. I, I think I can do this quickly so that I, so these are the inner four terrestrial planets. And um, so on Mars, uh, so Mars does have a natural satellite, but uh, it's kind of hard to show them. Well, hard to find them in the first. Okay, I found one of them, Phobos. And the other one is, I think, called the Deimos. Can I? Oh, wow, I found them. Okay, yeah. So those are the two moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos. 
Um, and you kind of see with this example, what I mean that um, the Earth's moon is special in how large it is. Uh, moons of Mars, um, they are probably captured asteroids. They are nothing like our moon. Even though, you know, Mars is not that small, it's only half the size of Earth. 